the WL Toys 104001. This thing has got all kinds of hype behind it. Fresh off the success of the 144001 and the 12418, this thing has got all the ingredients to be a ripper. The 14th scale and the 12th scale were awesome. I love these things. And there's a huge community behind them. And WL Toys listened when we all said, how sweet would it be if they made one of these in 10th scale? Now they have, here it is, but should you just pull this thing out of the box and go ripping? What are some things you can do to enhance the experience that you get when you buy something from China? And how good is this thing really? I mean, it looks pretty cool. So today, right now, before we run this thing, we're gonna tear it apart, take a look at the diffs, take a look at all the internals, and see if this thing is really as good as the hype. Start it up. So here it is, the 104001. I know that's a weird name, let me explain. 10 because it's 10th scale, 4 because it's four wheel drive, and 001 because this is the first version of it. But underneath is where things get really interesting. So inside they've upgraded their ESC receiver combo. It still uses the same transmitter as the other WL Toys products, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. They're pretty decent transmitters for what they are. 550 brushed motor with this enormous heat sink on it. This thing is massive. And we're running what looks to be a normal size servo, but it is still a five wire servo. So it's a classic case of if you upgrade one of the electronics, you end up having to upgrade them all. Again, not a huge deal. I know a lot of you guys out there are gonna wanna put brushless systems in this thing anyway. But I mean, just look at this thing. I mean, we've got all kinds of metal upgrades over the previous generations. Underneath, obviously we have a metal chassis. And again, this looks very similar to something that you would find from like Kyosho or Losi. And it definitely looks like it can take a little bit of a pounding. That's good. Tires, uh, they feel okay. I think I definitely prefer the older style tires that you have on the 14 and 12th scale version of these, but wheels and tires is something pretty much everybody always changes out or upgrades anyway, and I think I'm going to do the same. Just a Lexan wing, um, I'm not sure how you personally feel about it. Lexan wings are nice because they take a beating and they, you know, go right back into place. We've got some pretty substantial uh, oil-filled, fully adjustable, all aluminum shocks. Definitely a lot bigger than they are on the 14th and 12th scale versions. And all of your links are metal and adjustable. Awesome. So that's what it looks like under the hood. Let's tear this thing out and see if it's uh, holding any secrets. The first thing I'm gonna do is take apart the shocks and see how much shock oil is actually in here, if we need to top them up, and what the inside of them looks like. So it looks like most of the hardware on this is Phillips head. So I'm not sure how you feel about uh, Phillips head hardware. It definitely would have been nicer to see some hex heads, but I guess the benefit of being all Phillips head hardware is you really only need like one or two tools to take this whole thing apart. Open this up. Here we go, moment of truth. And what do you know? That's actually pretty much all the way full with oil. It's a little hard to tell on screen there, but yeah, that is pretty much exactly right. 
I'm gonna add just a couple drops to replace uh, what came out when I took it apart. And guys, there are cars at this price point that don't come with oil-filled shocks at all. That's pretty crazy to think about. Now I'm just gonna take off the other one and make sure it's the same. All right, the other shock looks pretty much exactly the same, not bad. And I'm actually gonna add just a touch of grease to the bottom here. And that will hopefully help uh, seal the bottom seal so we don't have any oil leaking out of it. Because shock oil is expensive and it's getting kind of hard to find these days. So we definitely don't want to lose any. All right, I got it up on the stand and let's flip it around to the back. I'm going to get this wing off and then we'll take a look at the rear shocks. There's one of the rears. Pretty full. Feels good. Looks good. And there's the last one. Nice. Awesome. Now, let's take the uh, center apart and see, one, did they lock tight any of this? And two, how's the gear mesh? Let's, let's take it apart. All right, so they definitely use Loctite right here where we have metal on metal. That's good. And check this out. We've got a metal spur and metal pinion, of course. And it looks like there is Loctite in there as well. Awesome. That's one thing that a lot of these manufacturers skimp on. Oil, grease, and Loctite. And before you know it, things start backing out, things start getting loose, and it's a little bit of a nightmare. But this looks pretty legit, I gotta admit. The gear mesh is about what I would set it as. I am going to add just a little bit more grease to the uh, pinion and spur. I know some people are going to say, oh my gosh, you can't do that. But hey, I'm in here. I'm only going to add a little bit and uh, I want to make sure this mesh is nice and uh, loop. Oh, that feels good. All right, I'm going to put the gear set back together and uh, make sure that I use Loctite when I put this metal plate uh, back on the top. Now it's time for the diffs. I'm gonna take apart the front and rear diff and uh, make sure there's grease in there and see what the, and see, just kind of investigate, see what the diffs are made out of, see how robust they look and. Uh Moment of truth. Oh no. Oh guys. You gotta look at that. There is not a drop of grease in there. Not a drop. Yikes. But still, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, these things are pretty inexpensive. They gotta save money somewhere, and it's gonna be on little things like this. So this just goes to show you how important it is to actually nut and bolt the whole car before you run it. Look at things like shocks, look at things like diffs, and make sure that you take some precautions before you end up breaking something prematurely. Because remember, parts for this are cheap and you can find them, but there's no kind of warranty or anything. So I'm gonna take this diff apart, add some grease, and put it back together. All right, so I just opened up the diff and there is oil, but there's not much. There is a diff seal there. That's kind of nice to see. Let's just pull that out. Yeah, I mean, there's not a whole lot there. So there you have it. That's just a tiny little glob inside the diff. Uh, I'm gonna add some. Well, guys, I just opened the front and yep, same thing. No grease at all, but it's not all that bad. Check out what I noticed on the diff casings. You see what this is right here? You know what that is? Yeah. That little bracket? That is for sway bars. There's gonna be some factory upgrades for this thing. How cool is that? So I'm gonna add some grease to it, put it all back together, and then I gotta tell you, you know, the looks, they're growing on me. I wasn't a really big fan at first, but you know, after taking this thing apart and working on it and getting into it, you know, like I'm, I'm really starting to like it. So overall, not bad. I mean, with just a few tools and supplies, uh, you know, you can go through this thing and this thing is, is ready to go. This thing's ready to rip. Pretty easy to work on. 
great to see some things are really well thought out. And if you want to pick one up, and I don't blame you if you do, I'm going to put a link to where I got mine down in the description below. And this thing's ready to go. Let's take it outside and give it a rip. That's going to be next time on 10 Scale Garage. So make sure if you're not subscribed, hit the, you know, hit the thingy and ring the, the dingle dongle. So if this is your first time checking out the channel, welcome. I'm glad you found it. I like to do shenanigans like this all the time. And we're going to take this thing out and rip it. So you're going to want to stick around. All right, guys. Until next time. Later.